to you. All right, Alex Salvi, appreciate it. Thank you. And joining us now with more insight and analysis, uh, analysis on Russia, Ukraine, and also NATO's uh, possible membership or Sweden's possible me membership in NATO, uh, along with the latest between Russia and Ukraine and some of the insight there. John Jordan, former naval intelligence officer, good to see you again. Uh, first of all, as far as what Medvedev was saying, you know, look, we talked on the show this week about that this war could last for a long time if it's not settled before then. And, and Medvedev was kind of touching on that a little bit. I think Armageddon is a, a bit of an exaggeration. It is. He's certainly trying to raise the temperature. Dmitry Medvedev yeah. is a serious player inside the Kremlin. He's former Russian president and a former prime minister. And now right. he sits on their National Security Council. So when he speaks, that's Kremlin policy. Yeah. And what they're trying to do is raise the stakes, is try to force the West into some sort of negotiation. I was, I was going to say, that sounds like the tactic. Kind yeah, of put the it, pressure on it, the U.S. It, that, hey, maybe you should start negotiating because the Biden administration isn't doing that. No. We have, we, the, the U.S. hasn't stepped in at all. And we're leaving kind of the opening for China and Turkey well, and other countries. What Russians are trying to do is engage that time that time tested negotiation tactic. Yeah. First guy, first guy who speaks loses, and they're trying to get the West to come to Russia with some sort of offer or negotiate or, yeah. or terms. Yeah. So, yeah, gotcha, gotcha. Sorry, um, I, I want to just quickly touch on also uh, Sweden and NATO. Um, is are we going to see something happen? I mean, there's pressure. Hungary says it's it's on board. It, it's not going to block this. But really, Turkey is is kind of the last country. Are we going to see pressure on Turkey go up before Vilnius, the NATO summit? Uh, a little bit. This yeah. is a long-standing issue, and this really has to do with internal Turkish politics, specifically yeah. the Kurdistan Workers' Party, the PKK. Right. Sweden, believe it or not, has a hundred thousand Kurds that have lived inside of Sweden for a long time, and they're well integrated in the Swedish society, and they're about one percent of the Swedish population. Yeah. So the Swedes are loath to the Swedes are loath to be harsh to this this big part of their country and to kick them out or to uh, otherwise call the PKK a terrorist organization. But right. this is an internal issue in Turkey, and Erdogan wants to try to extract some concessions, economic concessions from the West in return for his uh, his leverage here over NATO's uh, Sweden's and, NATO membership. And unlikely we're going to see NATO uh, or or Ukraine getting that invitation from Jens Stoltenberg before before next. Yeah, week. almost that's not going to happen not gonna because happen, right. were they to be a member, Article Five would already be triggered because already a conflict in place. Yeah, on, on the topic um, quickly of the war in Ukraine and, and the fallout from that short-lived Wagner rebellion that we've talked about also on the show. So one of Russia's top generals has been missing for a week, and that is Sergei Sotovivkin. I hope I'm saying that right. You're better at this because you speak Russian, so you're better pronouncing these names. There's reports he had ties to Wagner chief Yevgeny Prigozhin. Uh, what, what's your readout on this? I mean, he's missing or at least hasn't been yeah. seen in public. So General Surovikin was the Russian commander, theater commander for a while until he was replaced by Gerasimov, the current chief of staff. Yeah. The big conflict here is between Wagner and the Russian Ministry of Defense. And Surovikin was a member of the Ministry of Defense, but he was very, very well liked by Prigozhin and the Wagner group. He was acceptable to them. He'd served in Syria, he'd served in uh, Chechnya, and was a really tough, brutal guy. So the Wagnerites liked him. So the Russian governor is wondering, you know, was he really providing information to Prigozhin? Was he offering some sort of insurance that the Russian military would stand down largely? He would use his influence inside of the Russian Ministry of Defense yeah. to enable uh, changes at the top that Prigozhin tried to do with his march on Moscow. Yeah. And meanwhile, the fight continues. Uh, Ukraine saying that it's made some gains in the Bakhmut region this time last year, both on the 4th of July and today. We were in Bakhmut, so we were watching that dueling artillery battle, so that continues. Uh, John, with, with the time we have left, I want to talk quickly about the other breaking story today, and it has to do with, once again, uh, Iranian naval vessels, if you want to call it then, harassing um, oil tankers in the Strait of Hormuz. Very, very important strategic uh, location. I think 20% of the world's oil goes through there. Uh, what caught my attention was the fact that shots were fired. It sounds like Iran fired maybe a warning shot at one of these vessels, which is a, I think, a Bahamian flag flying, Greek owned, but U.S. managed, run, U.S. managed ship. What, what's going on here? Are things escalating? Could it be tied in any way to what's happening in Israel? It very well could be tied to what's going on in the West Bank, John and Janine. We all, we both know that the Iranians have an enormous presence there in the West Bank, or are funding Islamic Jihad and many of these other groups. Sure. And to see Israel move on them as harsh and as decisively as they did, this may have triggered an 
Iranian response. I think we need to see how this situation develops. And I'll be yeah. looking for is to see if this is repeated or escalated. Otherwise, otherwise, it might be possible this might be a local commander run amok. But I think we need to wait and see here. Yeah, stay tuned on that. Uh, John Jordan, always appreciate your expert analysis and insight. Uh, it was great having you this week. By the way, you'll be coming up in the second hour with uh, with Bianca. Good to see you, my friend. Good to see you. All right. Still